Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Jamie. Yes, I am in a new location. If you have questions about that, check my community page. I did a life update there and that will explain why I'm in a new place. Welcome, this is my new house. Every single video you see from now on, until I move house again, is <laughs> gonna be here. But hello, today we're gonna to be doing my November wrap up. I know this video is a little bit later than usual, but like, I've just been very, very busy. So please, please, please forgive me for this being like a week and a half too late. But we're gonna get straight into all of the books that I read in November. So sit tight. And let's get straight into it. So I read 12 books in November, which I'm very, very happy with. We had some hits, we had some misses, and we had all in between. <laughs> the first book I read in November was Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. Now this is a rom-com. It is a enemies to lovers second chance romance between our two main characters who are both working on this big influencer wedding. Our main character is a wedding planner and then her ex-boyfriend is a florist and they've both been asked to work on this wedding think like when i say big influencer wedding think like zoella like this is a big big deal this is a huge deal while they have to work together they also end up kind of talking about some of the things that went wrong in their relationship so what i really liked about this book was that it was dual perspective and dual timeline so in the present day with the big influence wedding we follow our main character emma and then also her ex-boyfriend his perspective we follow the past timeline and how they kind of like got together i gave this book a three out of five stars i feel like it was really promising at the beginning like i really liked the writing style but oh my god i just hated the male main character so much like he was just rude and like I think with grumpy sunshine it, it's such a interesting balance that you need and I just feel like he just you know leaned more towards the rude side like he was just grumpy and not a very nice person he didn't have very good manners whatsoever and like yeah he's a hot tattooed man who works with flowers like what a dream but also have a good personality i do feel like in the past timeline as well when we kind of learn about their relationship for the first time it was way 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 too quick like i need more of a slow burn to be honest i don't want them to be making out on the third time they've ever ever met they've never even been on a date they've only just ever had chance encounters and i just feel like the pacing was really really off i definitely cared so much more about armor's storyline with you know trying to really make it as a a wedding coordinator and like she's starting her own business after working underneath someone for her entire life i really cared more about the influence wedding and her like career trajectory rather than the actual romance which is just not what you want when you pick up a rom-com like you really want to care about the relationship apart from everything i've mentioned i really don't remember anything about this book which i think just speaks for itself like i read this in november i read this a month ago and already i'm sitting here trying to like rack my brain about like other other ways i felt about it other things that i have to say about it and unfortunately Unfortunately, it just didn't leave a big lasting impression on me. So I feel like three stars, like I enjoyed I enjoyed it while I read it, but like I still had critiques and you know, don't remember it all that much. I feel like a three stars is a very appropriate rating. So that was the first book I read in November. After that, I read Insatiable by Daisy Buchanan. And this is, I don't even really want to call it literary. Like it's, it's a contemporary fiction novel. We basically follow our main character, Violet. She's kind of like stuck in a bit of a rut. She's in this like job that she doesn't love. It's in her preferred field. Like she does work in the art industry, but she doesn't love her job at all. She has lost her best friend. She's decided to call off her engagement. And while she's like in this moment of being really stuck in a rut, she has this chance encounter and meets this very glamorous very mysterious older woman and this older woman invites her into their friend group and it turns out there are a bunch of swingers Violet is just swept up in all these sex parties and this this life of of glamour and you know a potential new job working with these guys and while she's like doing all this stuff she's also just figuring out other things in her life and like where her life went wrong I feel like this had actually had a really promising start I feel like this gets a way worse rap than I think it deserves I feel like I definitely understand that this is not for everyone like it was very very pornographic in some parts to a point where I was like this is just not necessary like this feels very very gratuitous but I understand why it's not for everyone like our main character isn't really She's a bit pathetic. Like that's kind of like the best way that I can put it. Like I understand her, like she's she's a damaged woman, but she's very, very like pathetic, I think. So I understand why it's not for everyone, but I did find it quite entertaining. I found it quite funny. And I was excited to see where our character was gonna go and the journey she was gonna go on. So the entire time I was thinking like four star rating, like I, I'm enjoying this. 
I think it's witty and I think it's exciting. It's kind of reminding me of Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I was thinking four stars the entire time and then by the end I just felt like it was slightly anticlimactic and a bit random. I feel like it was kind of out of nowhere and some of the characters that were involved in the ending weren't very very well developed so I feel like the payoff wasn't super exciting and wasn't no, I just don't feel like it was earned and it just ended very 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 randomly. I think it was a fine novel. I, I do recommend it if you can like handle how like pornographic it is in moments and if you do like you know an unlikable main character then like I think go for it but yeah it was a three star read for me. After that I read a book on my Kindle called The Revenge Pact by I think it's Ilsa Madden Mills. This is the first book in like a sports romance series but in the series the the three sports romances are all written by different authors. This book I rated two stars. It was far too long for what it was like way 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 too long but it's basically we follow our main two main characters, the girl Anastasia, she is recently going through a breakup and she wants to get revenge. So she uses this other guy whose name I've literally forgotten. She uses him to like get revenge on her boyfriend because like he's in the same frat as her boyfriend and I don't know, it's this whole drama. Like I said, this book was far too long. It dragged on far too much and I just did not give a fuck about either character. I think there were moments where I was like, oh yeah, this could be really, really sweet. I I'm really enjoying this. But like, they were just random. They were, they, there was this really weird obsession with the book The Outsiders. That was a massive theme and it just kind of made me cringe the entire time. I feel like the way the characters spoke was just not, not fun and very, very like, not like other girls. Oh my God, I'm not like other guys. Like, I don't know, it, it just made me cringe. It made me, it made my skin crawl. And then it just ended up being really, really boring. I just feel like this book was way too long. I said it before, I feel like our characters got together like way too early and then that just released the tension also way too early and the final 100 pages was such a slog to get through. I just didn't love this book. I, I didn't, I barely remember anything about it and I remember just being thoroughly, thoroughly bored. But by the like 70% mark, I had already like, you know, I had gone through to 70%, I might as well see it to the end. But yeah, then the ending just dragged on way too long, so. Yeah, two stars. Then I read another book on my Kindle called I Temporarily Do. And this is like a 200 page romance novel. And I actually really enjoyed this. This was really fun. This is a marriage of convenience, like friends to lovers book. And I feel like this was very, very true friends to lovers. Like our characters had like no chemistry, no flirtation, no sexual tension until like very, very later. So I would say it's a slow burn, but how slow burn can you really be? in a 200 page romance. Basically we follow our two main characters, they are both flatmates and they are about to move out to go to medical school to do their like masters or their postgraduate and they both need a place to live because Beckett, our male main character, he was supposed to live like in this apartment on campus for married couples and then his fiance calls off the wedding like moments before they're about to move and be married and then live there together. And then our female main character, her name's Emmy, she gets scanned out of this place that she was gonna live to go to the campus. So Becca and Emmy basically team up and decide, well, let's get fake married because Emmy's real name is Emily and that was the name of Beckett's like ex-fiance. They end up getting married to live in this apartment together and they're like besties while also having to pretend to be married to their like other married friends that live in the apartment complex that go to the university. It's just really sweet. Like there's no other word that I can describe for this book other than just like very, very incredibly pleasant. I did give it three stars because I just do feel like it could have been beefed up a little bit more. I feel like the writing style wasn't my favorite but I just found the book to be romantic and cute and this is the sort of friends to lovers I like, I think. Like, I like when it's realistic and it's a really natural progression from friends to being like, wait, are we attracted to each other? Wait, do we like each other? That was really nice rather than just like weird pining and deception and someone's in love with someone the entire time but then doesn't. Because I wouldn't stand for that sort of shit in real life. If I had a guy friend be like to me, I've been in love with you the entire time we've been friends, I'd be like, I feel slightly deceived. <laughs> like, ew. You know, like I feel, yeah. I just really liked how realistic it was and it was just cute. I love A Marriage of Convenience. I love the two characters. I feel like it could have been a bit more banterous. Is that a word? I don't know. I feel like it could have had some more humor and a little bit more about it, a little bit more meat, but it was cute. So three stars. I actually do recommend it if you're looking for like a short romance to, to spend an afternoon reading. After that, I read a book for my Reading My Physical TBR series and it was a wild ride. I read Hooked. 
by Emily McIntyre, which is the first book in the Never After series, which is a series that take like classic like fables, fairy tales, and turn them into smutty dark romance. I do have a full length reading vlog for this if you do want to see more of my in detail thoughts, but I gave this one three stars and I was very pleasantly surprised. I went into this book thinking that I was not going to love this. I was like, I am going to hate this novel so much. And I actually had a really good time. It was such a page turner and I flew through this novel. Basically Hooked is a very loose Peter Pan retelling. We follow our main character James, also known as Hook, who is a bit of a crime lord and he is very 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 angry with a man called Peter who runs an airline company. Peter moves into his town, into his city and there his daughter Wendy one day walks into James's or Hook's club James sees her and he's like, I'm going to make her fall in love with me and then ruin her life to get back at Peter for what he did to me. And obviously during the process, he ends up realizing that he has some very strong feelings for Wendy. I really like this. I thought it was really fun. I got the same feelings reading this as like the same as when I'm reading a thriller. It just felt like I was waiting for the next plot twist. I was waiting for the next twist and turn. And that was really exciting to me. Like I genuinely had a really good time with that. I don't think the romance is anything to swoon over. Like I don't think that these two characters should have been together but it was exciting and it was fun and it was a romp it was a silly fun little romp there are a lot of things that i think i could critique about this like i think the peter pan references went a little bit too hard sometimes it's a loose retelling right you didn't need to reference like literally every single feature of peter pan like you really did not have to and i also feel like i wish that it was more of a there was more of a challenge for our two main characters for wendy and for james i feel like james started catching feelings a little bit too early and i also feel like it was too easy for him to win wendy over i I wanted to see him actually try put his plan into action I try a little bit harder and for Wendy to have a little bit more of a backbone and not just fall at his feet like the first time she meets him but you know apart from that like it was still fun I had a fun time critiquing it and I had a fun time reading it and I actually can't wait to read more of the books in the Never After series so if you do want to see that reading vlog on this it's spoiler free and it should be pretty recent on my channel. Then the next few books I read for a 24 hour readathon vlog that I did, which is also on my channel. So I will speed through these ones quite quickly. First, I read Can I Steal You For A Second by Jodie McAllister, which is my one and only five star read this month. But it was so, so, so good. This is a companion novel for the Marry Me Juliet series, which is a really fun romance series that is set on a reality TV show, much like The Bachelor. Can I Steal You For A Second Though is a sapphic romance between two of the contestants. It's set at the same time as the first book here for the right reasons. I do feel like you can read these out of order but I had such a fun time reading this kind of knowing what was going to happen but also like being able to see the other main characters from the first book in a different light. I just feel like this book is so much fun. Like it's so unserious. It's such a good time. It's so like bingeable and readable and I just truly love these characters. I love that this book really celebrates reality television honestly like reality television is one of my guilty pleasures and it's something that is watched by a lot of women that is seen as quite vapid by society like the amount of times i've seen people shit on reality tv because it's not intellectual enough when it's actually something that can be very comforting for people i loved reading a book that like celebrated that and especially when our main characters in here are also fans of reality tv like it was just nice hearing them speak about reality tv in that way and also the romance itself was just so 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 gorgeous i loved our two main characters i just feel like this book does romance so well like the structure is perfect the story the overarching storyline like beyond the relationship is also very very exciting the characters are amazing i cannot recommend this romance series enough so if you are looking for a fun new romance series that isn't like a whole lot of other romances i've read before then this is 100% like this series is so good this one the tropes in it were like friends to lovers definitely friends to lovers and also kind of like forbidden love in a sense like you know they're not supposed to be together they're supposed to be like going for the same man not each other but it was just so fun i really really loved it so yeah definitely five stars then i read every heart a doorway by shauna mcguire which is the first book in the wayward children series and i unfortunately gave this one two stars which is definitely more of a taste thing rather than like 
an objective like critique thing like I think this book was well written it's just really really not for me unfortunately basically this book is like a lo-fi fantasy kind of like magical realism series we follow a bunch of teenagers a bunch of young people who go to this boarding school and this boarding school is for teenagers who have visited other worlds they've gone through portals and visited like other other realms and then when they get back to the real world they have to go to this boarding school there's also like a murder mystery element in here which i really wasn't expecting i just feel like for me this book was like a little bit too short when i'm reading a fantasy and it's a very extensive kind of like magical world i want there to be a lot of world building i want there i want to really know the characters know the magic system know the world in and out and i was so excited for the prospect of hearing about all these other worlds and the ins and outs of them and like going to see these other portals and stuff and maybe that happens a bit later in the series but like i just didn't get that i was very disappointed i feel like the characters weren't very well explained to me like i don't know i like I like having things pretty cut and dry explained and I feel like this one was just a little bit too mysterious in a sense. I just feel like I was just getting into it, like I was just beginning to understand, you know, the magic system and the world and then all of a sudden it just kind of finished and I was like, oh, okay. I probably won't finish the rest of the series but I do understand why people like this, it's just purely a taste thing for me. But it's definitely like well written and I can see the appeal. But yeah, I did give this two stars. After that, I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and I absolutely loved this book. This is a YA contemporary and it is all written in verse, so it is poetry. Basically, we follow our main character, Siomara, and she is a Dominican teenager living in Harlem. She comes from like a very intensely religious family. She doesn't have the best relationship with her family and she feels like she doesn't have a voice until she discovers slam poetry and really, really dives headfirst into that and that's how she expresses her emotions. It's such a classic kind of coming of age story in the sense that like we're hearing about her discovering boys for the first time, discovering sexuality, feeling insecure. I really related to aspects of this book, especially when Siomara would write poetry about body image and how if you were given like a curvier body in terms of like, you know, chest, bum, all of that, hips, like as a woman, you were seen differently by society. Like if you have like a bigger chest, you'll be seen as like slutty, you know, and you'll be you'll be called nasty names purely because of just how your body has, has been made up, you know, purely because of genetics. And I could really relate to stories like that. So it definitely hit me very, very, very emotionally. I would have loved to read this as like a full length, like written novel as opposed to poetry because unfortunately poetry is just not my favorite format of storytelling so i did give it four stars but i think if i read it like you know a regular like novel i would have given it five stars because the story was just so beautiful it had so much emotion and i feel like elizabeth acevedo like took thoughts from my head that i didn't even realize that i like didn't have words for and put them into like this beautiful poetry. I highly, highly recommend this book, especially if you are a poetry fan. I feel like you'd get even more out of it than I did, but I really, really loved this and yeah, highly recommend. And then I read, um, I think I gave this one star. I don't know. Maybe I gave it two, but yeah, it just wasn't good. It is Vipers and Virtuosos by Sav R. Miller and it's the second book in the Monsters and Muses series, which is a series of dark romances. I really, really, really enjoyed the first book and I was like, I'm not, I'm not, much of a dark romance person like I'm fairly new to the genre so I'm still really exploring what I like and don't like in dark romance and so when I read the first book in the series I was like oh my god I'm a dark romance stan like I loved that immediately bought the second book in the series and oh my god what the fuck like actually what the fuck <laughs> Basically, this is a bully stalker like revenge romance. It's a retelling of Orpheus and Eurydice, which is a Greek myth. Basically, our two main characters, Aiden and Riley, spend like a night together and Aiden's a really famous rock star. Riley's got a really, really dark past, has dealt with like the mafia before. Her brother's like really powerful in the mafia. And photos of their night together surface on the internet and rumors start that Aiden has sexually assaulted Riley. Riley really wants to make a statement being like, that's absolutely not true, that's not what happened. And she ends up being shut down by her brother in the mafia because he's like, you can't draw attention to yourself because of like all your dealings with the mafia. Like people who are looking for you will find you. So three years later or two years later, like a, a time has passed, 
Riley changes her hair color, changes her name and moves to a really small little island. Very small population. And Aiden has been stalking her for the past three years. It was like, the beginning was really good because the beginning was just their night together and I loved our characters together. I loved their chemistry. I was like, these are such good characters. I love them. Like, this is just a beautiful, I get that they both have like, tor they're both tortured souls. They both had dark pasts. But I don't understand how this is going to be a dark romance because like it's so romantic. And then like I, found, I find out and Aiden is disgusting. Like him stalking this woman. He literally has a line where he says, let, he's like stalking her. She finds him and he literally says to her like, careful or I'll make those rumors true. Like that's like threatening rape against her. I know it's a dark romance. I know. Like there's literally a disclaimer in the beginning of the novel where it says like Aiden is a bad guy. Like he's an anti-hero. He'll do things that you won't like and he won't be sorry about them. And so like I know that that's kind of the purpose of the book is these really dark themes. But like I personally don't want to read about that. I've read dark romances where the guy has at least a little bit of humanity and I feel like Aiden was just gross. Like he was just really, really gross. I think it was definitely like bingeable. Like I wanted to know what happened next, but I just couldn't get behind like some of the things that were said. I feel like it was far too sexual, which is ridiculous because it's a fucking dark romance. Like I know this, I know I'm probably gonna get a comment being like, Jamie, don't read dark romance if you don't want it to be like super smutty. Don't worry, I know that. But like I've read dark romances that I've really enjoyed and they've had aspects of them that I do really like and they can be super smutty without being too much and sacrificing other parts of the story and also they can be like bad like mafia guys who kill people but also like have a heart <laughs> so yeah I just I didn't love this I didn't love this unfortunately I gave it one star I might take a look at the other books in the series the monsters and muses series and see if any of them are based on myths that I really like or see if any of them have tropes that I enjoy and I might read those ones but I don't know if it's as high a priority for me to like pick up the rest of the series now even though the first book was so good anyway after that I read stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco and I gave this one four stars I believe this is the first book in yeah the stalking Jack the Ripper series which I'm reading for my patron we're reading the series together and I I really really liked this I thought it was really fun I'm not the biggest historical fiction girly so I was a little bit apprehensive like I love a murder mystery but like I wasn't sure about the Victorian England setting or if I'd really like that and then I think the reason why it's a four star and not a five star is because of that Victorian England setting like there was a lot of descriptions of like the gowns and like you know it's very historical and like I, I I didn't really care but the actual like murder mystery of it was so fun basically in this book we follow our main character Audrey she is a forensics apprentice working for her uncle and then Thomas is also an apprentice and they're like working together and then all of a sudden there's all these women that are getting brutally murdered and Jack the Ripper that's him. So Audrey and Thomas uh, take it upon themselves to try and solve this mystery. I loved this. I feel like their, I feel like the romance, the romantic subplot in here was my favorite thing about it. I feel like Thomas Cresswell, I love him so much. And like, I can't wait to read about more of their romance. I really loved the two main characters. Kerry Maniscalco is a great writer. I feel like there was some really good, like witty banter in here, some really good funny lines. And I feel like this is like reminding me why I used to love YA as a teenager. I feel like I'm getting back into my YA phase, which is hilarious because I feel like there are a lot of people my age who are slowly getting out of it and I'm like diving head first back in after reading like predominantly like adult fiction for such a long time. I really enjoyed this. I think it's so 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 fun and I can't wait to read the rest of the series. After that I read A Twisted Love Story which was my other patron read and this is a thriller by Samantha Downing. I gave this four out of five stars. I really really enjoyed it. It was so fun and exactly what I needed at the time. I read it in one sitting. I binged through it and I definitely am aware that this is not going to be for everyone. Like it's not a classic thriller I would even I would almost even call it romantic suspense in, in in a way yeah I gave it four stars I found it a good time I found it to be funny I found it to be kind of iconic basically we follow our two main characters Ivy and Wiz and they are in a very very toxic on again off again relationship Ivy and Wiz haven't spoken for four months and all of a sudden Ivy's like I need to get his attention so she calls the police and is like, I'm being stalked. And I think it's this guy, Wiz. The police go to Wiz and are like, are you stalking your ex-girlfriend? And he's like, 
no i'm not then wes calls ivy and is like why did you do that and she was like i don't know should we meet up and talk about it they meet up and then she's like can we get back together and he's like yeah sure kind of iconic of them both to be honest they end up getting back into their really toxic on again off again relationship but because ivy has like alerted the police to them as a duo our detective is now uncovering something really bad that Ivy and Wes did together when they were like uh, like 10 years ago in the early stages of their relationship. There's a whole bunch of different side characters that somehow relate to this story as well. It's very very intense and I just had a really good time reading it honestly. Like it wasn't super twisty, it wasn't like super intense but I really liked Samantha Downing's writing style and I really liked the two main characters and I just had a good time reading it so yeah four stars. After that I read a book called The Herd by Andrea Bartz and I gave this one star. I literally finished this like a week ago and I don't remember a single thing about it. Basically in this book we follow a CEO of this place called The Herd which is an all woman like working space and then this other girl who's like friends with the CEO ends up like joining she gets a job like working underneath her and then the CEO goes missing and it turns into this big like mystery like where is she gone every single character sounded exactly the same like every single character had the exact same voice it was so fucking boring nothing happens and it was it's supposed to be a thriller and then like there's nothing thrilling about it at all like this is literally about a missing person like that should be so exciting and it just so wasn't it was so freaking boring and I really did not like it and it was a slog to get through and I gave it one star I really don't recommend it I just don't think it's good writing I just really don't think it's good writing and I couldn't tell you like anything about the plot like I don't that's I don't remember like it's it was so bad and so boring yeah offensive to me because I had to read it waste of time <laughs> sorry that one was harsh I'm just really tired I haven't done a you know I feel like I took like a couple of weeks off making videos really and I'm feeling it. I'm getting back into the swing of things. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my November wrap up. I promise I will be way more onto it with videos now. Like I just needed to get the past like week out of the way, but I'm going to be more onto it now. I promise. But yeah, a cheeky reminder that all my socials are linked down below as well as my Patreon. So if you do want to see more exclusive content from me, all of the information about the benefits and stuff are on the page. But yeah, Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you all very, very much. And I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.